This video is designed only to demonstrate the use of the Midland Emergency Response Kit and is not intended to be used as a training tool for emergency response to rail tank car incidents. This video is not intended to provide recommendations and or training on emergency response procedures or use of personal protective equipment. Midland shall in no way be responsible for any personal injury, property damage, or any other liability as a result of any leak from a rail tank car, including without limitation any environmental damage and or liability which may result therefrom. The following video has been produced by Midland Manufacturing to provide information on the proper procedures for using the Midland B240-B243 emergency response kit for mitigating leaking valves and fittings on pressurized rail tank cars. The purpose of the emergency response kit is to provide emergency responders with a variety of tools and replacement parts that can be used to stop the leak on any of the various valves and fittings they may find on a variety of tank rail cars. An emergency is no time for on-the-job training. It is recommended that you familiarize yourself with the contents of this video. The emergency response kit, recommended practices, and installation procedures before an emergency occurs. This video is not a substitute for in-depth training or specific handling techniques or emergency response procedures. In the event of a leaking valve or fitting, it is critical that appropriate steps be taken immediately to mitigate the leak. Anyone involved in capping a leak should follow their company's procedures and manufacturer's material safety data sheets, MSDS, regarding personal protective equipment. Note that in the event of an actual tank car leak, you would be required to wear the appropriate personal protective equipment. For purposes of this video demonstration, the participants are only wearing minimal safety equipment. Although rare, when leaks occur on tank cars, they are usually found in the valves and fittings used to load and unload the tank cars or the safety relief devices used to protect the car from being overpressurized. The Midland Emergency Response Kit contains tools to allow the repair of leaking valves and fittings to stop leaks, as well as capping cans to contain leaks that cannot be stopped. Let's examine the contents of the Midland Emergency Response Kit. Two large carrying cases, a toolbox containing a broad range of tools and replacement parts, five different cover cans with respective gaskets which can be used to cap a leaking valve or fitting, a bridge used to secure the cover cans to the manway cover plate. Real tank car leaks may be found in several different locations, such as angle valves, pressure relief valves, gauging devices, sample valves, and thermo wells. Let's examine the procedure for stopping leaks from an angle valve. If the leak is through the side port of the angle valve, the first step should be to make sure the valve is closed. The next step should be to check the outlet flange bolts for tightness. Retighten all four bolts on the outlet flange. If the valve is closed and the outlet flange is secure, the next step is to tighten the pipe plug. If the leak is coming from below the valve mounting flange, tighten down the flange nuts nearest the leak and then alternating one, three, two, four. Leaks involving vapor angle valves should be handled in the same manner as liquid angle valves. If the leak persists, back out the pipe plug. Use extreme caution when doing this because the tank is under pressure. If the volume of the leak substantially increases as the plug is loosened and does not slow down after a moment or two, retighten the pipe plug and again check to ensure that the valve is closed. If the valve is securely closed and the leak persists, the next step is to cap the valve using a capping kit. We will cover this procedure in the containing a leak section of this video. However, if the leak increases as the plug is loosened and then begins to slow down to a seep, remove the plug. Using the wire brush from the toolbox, clean the male threads of the pipe plug and dislodge any debris from the female threads of the angle valve's port. Next, wrap the male thread of the pipe plug clockwise with four to six wraps of Teflon thread tape. Next, reinsert the pipe plug into the valve port. Be careful not to cross the threads. Wrench the pipe plug into the valve port using an 18-inch or longer pipe wrench so that the pipe plug will seal. If the leak is found in the packing gland of the angle valve, tightening the valve packing gland may stop the leak.
If the leak is found in the packing gland of the angle valve, and the valve has an adjustable packing gland held in place by a top lock nut, loosen the lock nut without loosening the packing screw. Then tighten the packing screw with a wrench using approximately 60 foot-pounds of torque. If the valve adjustment is made by tightening down two stud nuts, wrench down the nuts alternately until tight. Be careful not to strip the threads. Next, we will examine stopping leaks from pressure relief valves. If a leak is between the valve and the mounting plate below the valve, tighten down alternately on the stud nuts one, three, two, four. If the leak is a liquid leak coming through the discharge orifice of the pressure relief valve, this indicates that the tank car is liquid full and some of the liquid must be removed or transferred into another suitable container. If the tank pressure is below the valve setting and gas is leaking through the discharge orifice of the pressure relief valve and the valve is an internal style with a spoke top guide and the springs and other parts extend down through a hole in the cover plate end of the car, replacing the O-ring that sealed the valve will probably stop the leak. Caution. Conducting this procedure may be hazardous depending on the material in the tank car. Maintenance personnel should be carefully trained before being permitted to perform the following procedure on a pressure relief valve mounted on a pressurized tank. Remove the top seal wire. Remove the four top guide nuts and situate them so they won't be lost. Mark the top guide and body with a vertical line to allow the top guide to be reinstalled in the same orientation. Pry up and remove the top guide. Put a wrench on the flats of the O-ring retainer and another wrench on the top lock nut. Hold the retainer in place to prevent it from rotating while backing off and removing the top lock nut. Caution. Replace retainer. Replace the retainer with the retainer in the kit that has epoxied O-rings. If valve leakage continues, cap the valve with a cover can. Warning. O-ring replacement should only be done by trained personnel with proper replacement O-rings. Remove the retainer and look carefully for nicks, rust, scale, solidified product, and other foreign material on the valve seat. The O-ring makes its seal on the top of the crown of the valve seat and on a small area on the outboard side past the top of the seat. Use emery paper, 400 grit, to clean this surface. Then wipe away any loose residue. Visually inspect this surface to detect any irregularities that may still be there. After cleaning and confirming that the valve seat area is clean and free of defects, apply a small amount of lubricant to the exposed thread of the valve stem. We provide retainers for our valves with O-rings already glued into the retainer to prevent them from coming out during installation under pressure. Install the new O-ring retainer and secure it with the top lock nut. Take care to prevent rotation of the retainer using two wrenches. Install the top guide and secure it with the four guide nuts. Next, we will examine stopping leaks from gauging devices. If the leak is coming from beneath the flange mounting, tighten the stud nuts down alternately, one, three, two, four. If the leak originates underneath the protective cap that is threaded to the top of the body, further tighten the cap with the appropriate wrench. Warning: Do not remove the protective cap from a leaking magnetic gauging device under any circumstances. Doing so may cause the device to be ejected from the car under force. Next, we will examine stopping leaks from sample valves. The sample valve, which is located above the cover plate, usually consists of a nipple and a needle valve. If the leak is coming from the nipple, use the pipe wrench to further tighten it to the cover. There may be a leak between the nipple and the needle valve. Tightening the hex body of the needle valve may stop the leak. Next, we will examine stopping leaks from thermal wells. If the thermal well is leaking at the three-quarter inch pipe thread connection on the cover plate, use the pipe wrench to tighten the connection. Another potential leak path is below the hex cap at the top of the fitting. Further closing of this cap may stop the leak. Caution! Do not remove the hex cap if this is where the leak is coming from, because the cap's removal could escalate the incident. If the preceding leak stopping techniques are not effective in eliminating the cause of the leak, 
and if all other appropriate options have been completely and thoroughly considered, then an emergency capping kit may be used to contain the leak. Caution. Response personnel should be aware that the use of a capping kit may prevent response personnel from pursuing alternative response options. Let's examine the equipment used for capping leaks. The Midland Emergency Response Kit consists of gaskets, cover cans, bridges, tie bars. There are five different sizes of cover cans with respective gaskets which can be used to cap the leaking valve or fitting. The first step is to lay the gaskets from the cover cans around the valve or fitting you are attempting to seal to determine which of the cans will fit. The individual cover cans or caps cannot be used if the valves and fittings on the manway cover plate have not been designed to be cappable. In this case, the fittings may be positioned too close together. The minimum spacing between the flange edges is three quarters of an inch to permit the installation of the cover cans and their gaskets. Third, the nuts on the manway studs may be too close to the valve flanges, again three quarters of an inch minimum spacing, to position the cover cans. If the spacing is less than three quarters of an inch minimum, the capping kit cannot be used to apply a cap and achieve a seal to the cover plate. Next, prepare the sealing surface of the cover plate to receive the gasket. Any nicks, corrosion, chipped paint, or other discontinuities should be smoothed out using a flat blade scraper, wire brush, and emery paper. Wipe away all loose debris. Proper preparation of the sealing surface between the gasket and the cover plate is very important to eliminate or minimize any potential leak paths below the gasket. Now, select the can that fits over the valve being capped. The valve hand wheel or ball valve handle will need to be removed to allow the can cover to be positioned around the leaking valve or fitting. On valves equipped with removable bushings, it may be necessary to remove the bushings. For 1 inch and 2 inch angle valves, it will be necessary to remove the side port pipe plug to allow for can clearance. For the 3 inch angle valve, the complete side flange will need to be removed for can clearance. Now we will demonstrate installing the can plumbing required to remove the leaking liquid or gas once the can is installed. The first step is to install the gasket on the bottom rim of the cover can. Remember, always thoroughly clean off the surface of the cover plate on which the gasket will seal. In the side port of the cover can, you will be installing the following 90 degree elbow, 2 inch nipple, and a ball valve. On the male threads of the nipple and elbow, wrap Teflon thread tape clockwise. Install the 90 degree elbow on the side port on the cover can. This elbow should be rotated to the 11 o'clock or 1 o'clock position so that it does not interfere with the bridge that will be positioned above it later. Use the offset pipe wrench on the elbow to tighten it. Next, screw the nipple and the 2 inch ball valve on the other end of the elbow. Be sure the ball valve is fully open. Again, use the pipe wrench to snug the threads. Now, lower the cover can so that the side port of the can is at a 90 degree angle from the bridge to be installed. Again, make sure that the can does not interfere with any of the other valves or fittings and that it is seated so the can wall is square to the surface of the cover plate. Reinspect the gasket to make sure the rim of the can is in the groove of the gasket and is seated and flat on the previously clean surface of the cover plate. Now we will demonstrate how to install the bridge that will hold the cover can securely in place. Open or remove, if necessary, the two porthole covers on the protective housing or dome which are in line with the covered valve. Install the two porthole brackets, the four tie bars, and the four lower 5 8 inch tie bar pins through the two side holes of the cover plate skirt. Note that on some protective housings or domes, the porthole under the hinge will require the use of the thin tie bar on the outside when the space between the hinge pin and the housing is too narrow for a one inch thick tie bar. Now we'll install the jack screws. Adjust the block on the jack screws to the lowest position so that only the ball end of the jack screw protrudes. Position the jack screw and the block assembly in a location on the bridge assembly so that the bridge assembly will overhang the manway housing equally when lowered on the jack screw block 
with the screw in the cover can socket. Hold the top of the jack screw assembly while guiding the tie bar ends up through the openings between the channels. Install the four tie bar pins. Center the jack screw on the cover. Tighten the jack screw and when slightly more than hand tight, tap the brackets with a bronze mallet to center each in the porthole. Then tap the tops of the tie bar pairs so they are vertical, parallel and equally spaced. Tighten the jack screw until the cover can is sealed. If necessary, loosen the jack screw, tap the jack screw to recenter it on the cover, and keep the cover square to the manway cover plate and retighten it. Close the 2 inch ball valve and inspect the cover gasket seal for leaks. If the gasket leaks, remove the cover, clean the cover plate surface, and replace the gasket if necessary. Reinstall the cover can. If leakage is contained, then the capping is complete. Note that after the leaking angle valve has been capped, if it is a liquid valve, then it is possible to use the other liquid angle valve to offload the product from the car. The procedure for installing a cover can over a pressure relief valve is the same as the installation on an angle valve. Caution! Constant monitoring of the pressure in the car must be done before capping the pressure relief valve and after capping the pressure relief valve. The cover can should not be applied if the pressure in the car is exceeding the pressure relief valve pressure setting. Since in this case, the pressure relief valve is performing correctly and preventing overpressurization of the car. Now we'll demonstrate installing the cover cans for the sample valve and thermal well. If the leak is from the sample valve or the thermal well, these two fittings can also be capped with cover cans. To do this, Use the small I-beam that is 3 inches high and 18 inches long with one of the two small cans attached to each end of the I-beam. Clean the gasket sealing surface around the leaking fitting. Install the bleed valve assembly in one cover can and install gaskets on both cans. Set the cover can with the bleed valve over the leaking valve or fitting. It is not necessary to cover the other non-leaking fitting with the other can. It may be necessary to remove one angle valve handle, which will be under the I-beam. Be sure that the second can is located so the center of the I-beam is directly under the compression screw jack. After the small I-beam is positioned under the bridge, follow the procedure covered earlier for the liquid angle valve. Remember, once a capping kit has been used to secure a leak, the shipper will be required to obtain an emergency exemption from the U.S. Department of Transportation if the tank car is going to continue to be moved. In addition, overhead clearance must be considered since the kit is installed above the usual high point of the tank car. The Midland Emergency Response Kit can be used to stop non-accidental releases. Emergency response teams should familiarize themselves with the contents of the kit and practice assembling the kit on a tank car before an emergency arises. An emergency is not the appropriate time to begin an on-the-job training course. When responding to an emergency, follow your company's rules and recommended procedures and consult the manufacturer's MSDS for the appropriate personal protective equipment and respiratory devices. This video is designed only to demonstrate the use of the Midland Emergency Response Kit and is not intended to be used as a training tool for emergency response to real tank car incidents. This video is not intended to provide recommendations and or training on emergency response procedures or use of personal protective equipment. Midland shall in no way be responsible for any personal injury, property damage, or any other liability as a result of any leak from a rail tank car, including without limitation any environmental damage and or liability which may result therefrom.